Hi everyone, how are you doing? This is Amanda, I hope that you're well. The joys of being a YouTuber, every time I sit down and try and record there is so much outside noise at the moment, so apologies. Uh, the scaffolding going up a few doors up from me and uh, there's nothing I can do about it. So let's just hopefully, hopefully it's not going to be too loud. It's annoying, but hey, there's a lot of stuff in life at the moment that is annoying and we've just got to push through it. Indeed, much of this video is going to be a call to push through, to prepare and to take proactive action for some of the things that are already on the horizon in our world or are potentially coming in. Although some of this is going to be linking into prediction energy, remember also that predictions are a bit like things that you can see on the horizon. There is maybe a low chance that they might happen or a high chance that they might happen, but you can see them, otherwise you wouldn't be reporting on them. But whether we pull them towards us as a collective is very much dependent on what we throw at them. And if we go into massive fear about something that is concerning, which we can see out there on the horizon, we will pull that very quickly towards us, okay? Um, versus if we stay in the energy of sovereignty and love, we can actually push that ship out of the vicinity of our view and indeed into a different realm. You know, we can almost like push it back into astral. Um, and get it transformed and transmuted. So remember that always. Nothing is ever set in stone. And if you are given information of things to come or eventualities that might happen, you uh, have the ability to also be able to change events if they're not going to be necessarily positive for the collective. Right. Um, and you might say, well, why are you talking about them then? Because we can't bury our head in the sand. OK, <laughs> yeah, you can't bury your head in the sand. You've got to be aware of what's there. But being a master magician is about being aware, but then using your resources and your skill and your energy and your frequency to bring in the best and highest timeline for our world, knowing what other timelines are sort of lurking. OK. If you can see smoke going across the screen, it's because I've got my incense on. Let's just put it, I quite like the smell of that actually. So let's just, yeah, let's just keep it there. Okay, um, let me, before I do anything, pull a couple of cards. And I'd like to pull a couple of cards linked into where we are right now as a world. So if the world was a person, uh, let's do a reading for the world, okay? so. If the world were, was a person, let's have three cards, please, for where the world is right now. And this isn't just about your part of the world, it's about the whole world. Three cards for our world. How is he, she doing? Keep shuffling, okay. All right, one's just fallen out, don't know what it is, can't see it yet. That one, how is our world doing? Okay, I've actually got four cards. Right, the one that flipped out is the chariot. And straight away, we're, we're seeing the white horse and the black horse. And this is the energy of light and darkness. And um, what I'm hearing and I know you might say, what are you on about? But what I'm hearing is that both are at a temporary standstill. Bear with me. Let's see what then comes. Because we have the card of temperance that comes next. Patience. Um, but also that feels very much like a card of pause. Pause. We're in a time of pause. Very easy to look around the world and say, what are you going on about? Of course, the darkness is accelerating or the light is accelerating. But that's not what I'm hearing right now. I'm hearing that actually we're in a time of pause and standstill. OK, before one or the other of these horses starts to move forward and gains ground. But at the moment, it's almost as like there's, there's a feeling of equality, actually. Um, equality isn't quite the right word. Um, rather, what I'm trying to say is that light and dark are more balanced than you realise they are, OK? Just because you're hearing a, a lot of darkness in the collective, which may very well be true and may be happening, 
um, remember you're not hearing the counter stuff, which is all of the amazing things that also go on in our world day in, day out. So actually we're in a more balanced state than you actually realise, despite everything to the contrary. Even look at this card, it's a balance. She's got her hands balanced. Okay, the two horses are at peace, they're balanced. Right, what comes next? Um, we then have the card of Perseverance, um, Seven of Discs, and we have the rainbow, the energy of the rainbow. Um, remember again, to make a rainbow, you have to have rain and you also have to have sun. So it's definitely there's an energy here in our world that I'm actually quite surprised to be tapping into, but I'm glad I'm tapping into, which is about balance. Equal rain, equal sun, equal light, equal dark, um, and just balancing the two. Okay. We do then have a card here which I need to ask about, which is the Five of Cups, which is the card of disappointment. Oh, okay, I'm being told I don't need another card because I'm hearing why did it take us so long? Why did it take us so long to get to this place, even if we can't see it and it hasn't actually um, been reported on yet, um, that things are more balanced than they appear to be? Why has it taken us so long to get here? And then we've got the card of determination, the Prince of Swords, which is linked into truth. Um, and that feels as though it's linked into the fact that many people have been and still are slow to want to wake up to some of the truths that will help balance out the light and the dark even more. Um, and when I say that, how can you improve on 50-50? You can't. But what you can do is you can cement in the positions a little bit more. That's what I mean by more people waking up to the truth. Um, so that's just a really quick snapshot. And we might come back to those cards. But for now, that is what I want to say. Just suddenly went really dizzy. Hold on, let's just see. There's something else wanting to come through here. Um, okay, pull another card from this deck I'm hearing. Okay. I'm going to go to a different deck. The World, and that will be the fifth card. How many cards have we got? One, two, three, four. And I've got five. Okay, I need seven. Because God created the world in seven days. Okay. Um, because it's about creating new earth. We have the four of fire. Show me the energy of the world, please. Show me the energy of the world. It's really interesting. What I'm tapping into... Um, is that when you go up to the higher perspective and look down from a higher perspective and just ask the world how she's doing, she's far less in turmoil and stress versus us as the human beings upon her. We may very well and justifiably be so, um, be feeling frantic, stressed, worried, fearful for the future, um, feeling as though the darkness has got an upper hand, but Mother Earth is feeling much more, um, I'm hearing the word laissez-faire, which uh, I just need to look up the meaning of because I can't remember what it actually means. <laughs> uh, what does that mean? Hold on. All my French followers are now uh, screaming at me. It means the policy of leaving things to take their own course without interfering. <laughs> How perfect is that? That's exactly where Mother Earth is, at, at the energy of laissez-faire. The policy of leaving things to take their own course without interfering. She knows we're going to get there, basically. She knows we're going to get there. Now, you might say, well, how can you get there if you've only got an equal balance of light and dark? Don't we want 100% light? That would only happen if we choose as a collective that we do not want planet Earth to be a planet of duality anymore. And for that to happen, we would have had to have cleared up all of our karma, uh, because remember, this is the planet we come to, to learn our lessons, to work through our karma with other people, with other situations. Um, so if suddenly Earth doesn't have the ability to be that teaching school, that training school, um, then, uh, you know, it, 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 there's, a, there's a divine order to all of this right now. Um, you learn th often through adversity and you learn through challenge. That's been the nature of the beast on this planet for a long time. So to get to a place which is more about standstill and peace um, is 
is pretty good, actually. On a planet of duality, for us to be getting more towards a 50-50 perspective is brilliant. As I say, this is going to be a very easy message for people to mock and laugh at and deride um, because you've only got to turn on your news or the media and you will just see darkness upon darkness upon darkness. Please remember, as I said earlier, that you are not being given access to the good news, OK, because it doesn't sell newspapers. There is much good that is happening in our world that is not reported. And equally, just because you're seeing more darkness, it's actually a sign that it's come up for healing. You know, you haven't been able to see it up to this point in time because it's been so deeply embedded and hidden. It's coming up to the light because the light has forced it up. So, um, yeah, these last two cards, though, from the Japanese tarot, the four of fire in the world, very springtime. You know, we've got the maypole dance, fertility, um, uh, um, for, yeah, just fertility. It's like goddess energy, um, youthfulness, um, springtime, innocence, purity. Um, it's very Eden-like and it's next to the card of the world. And remember... Uh, the world is usually the end of one cycle and the beginning of another. It's as though Earth, over the last however many thousands of years she's been in existence or millions of years she's been in existence, but more from when we've been on her, because of course she's been around for millions of years, but from when man started to come and accrue karma and do bad deeds and you know have have free will to make good choices or bad choices it's as though we're starting to come towards the end of that cycle and it's as though spirit is doing um, a merry dance and definitely the energy of laissez-faire as i say she knows she's allowing it to take its own course because she knows ultimately um, what needs to transpire and what needs to happen um, is on course for arrival wow how amazing is that i feel as though i should actually just stop the video here <laughs> But I am going to carry on um, and I'll remind you of this positive message at the end if we have uh, uh, delved into other subjects which have concerned you, although I will try and keep it as hopeful and um, as possible. OK, right. So first thing on my list that I wanted to talk about is in many ways, OK, if Mother Earth is laissez-faire, we need to be like that as well. Um, and this fits very neatly into what I, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, which is to do with preparing for these times, um, food, uh, the cost of living crisis or the escalating cost of living, um, potential food shortages that may arise, um, and also gas and fuel supplies that might start to be restricted. They already are. And what we can do about it. There's two spiritual passages um, that I have been shown with regard to this because certainly there's a lot of stuff out there that will put a lot of fear into you um, that you know there's not going to be enough to go around that shortages are going to be real that you need to be stocking up and preparing and panicking um, and panicking certainly is not going to be helpful uh, I'm being given two things to say to you. Number one, and I've said this before on uh, some other social media, is the story of the five fish and the three loaves, the feeding of the 5,000, basically, which I didn't know was actually um, referenced a couple of times within the Gospels. I'm also going to mention the story of uh, Joseph and Jacob and the famine preparing for seven years of famine uh, after seven years of plenty. Uh, famine is a very emotive world, word. And of course, in certain parts of our world, world people already have famine and have done for uh, many, many decades, if not generations. Um, I'm not predicting a world famine for seven years. I'm just going to use the analogy of these two stories. Let's start with Joseph and Jacob. Those of you that don't know your Old Testament, you, you don't need to know your Old Testament. I'm going to tell you in a nutshell, basically, um, Joseph, who uh, was thrown into a uh, prison cell, um, started to be able to interpret the dreams of some of his inmates. 
and um, Pharaoh, uh, the Pharaoh of Egypt of that time, then also started to have a dream. And Joseph is called from his prison cell to um, decipher the Pharaoh's dream, which was causing him great worry. And Joseph interprets the dream and tells him to prepare for seven years of famine following seven years of plenty. And the Pharaoh follows his advice and does exactly that. So when the hard times come to the land of Egypt, um, they are prepared, they are well stocked, they do not suffer. They don't um, misappropriate the good times. They save for the rainy days, okay? They save for the times of less in the times of plenty. Um, but remember also that it's given, um, he's given the dream. So it's as though God, spirit, universe, whatever it is that you believe in, has already um, warned um, that preparation is needed for the days ahead. So it's not like um, they go blindly into it. And then the story goes that, of course, they have stuff left over, which they also then share with other uh, people, other nations. So they're able to help others, not just themselves. That's a really important part of it as well. It's not just about saving for yourself. It's about also being able to help other people. Um, so then let's talk about the story of the feeding of the 5,000, whereby a crowd gathers to hear Jesus uh, talk. And um, they have five fish and three loaves to feed this huge crowd. And somehow they manage to make it all go round. It's obviously a miracle. Um, the point is, though, that when they start to go into the crowd, the disciples go into the crowd, they literally do only have the five fish and the three loaves. But they keep breaking off the bread from the loaf. They keep you know, taking apart the fish and giving a little bit to each person. And they realise that it goes much further than they think it does. Somehow they're able to feed all of the people from a much more limited supply than should be possible. Because I've been writing the Christ Consciousness deck, um, I had actually forgotten that, I think it's actually after Jesus was crucified and then he um, is resurrected and comes back to them. There's another passage later on in the gospel whereby, um, and I mentioned this in my Easter message, where for some reason there's some contamination of the yeast and the disciples get really worried that they're not going to have enough bread. And Jesus reprimands them and basically says, have you forgotten what we did literally only weeks before, that we were able to feed all of these people? And it's all to do with having faith and trust um, that you will be provided for, basically but not from a place of complete apathy in terms of just expecting it to fall from heaven, very much having to take proactive action as well as having trust and faith. And I think when you combine those two uh, references from the Bible, the dream of Pharaoh and Joseph, and then Jesus's um, example of also being able to spread and share um, what was needed, um, I think they're important things to keep in the back of your mind um, for, as I say, days to come. So if, and I'm saying if, remember what I said at the start about predictions, if we were to enter a time where the cost of living gets even higher and higher and higher, and that could keep on happening um, if we don't take new junctures in our road, uh, in our world rather, and, you know, obviously the war also starts to recede because this is causing problems with grain production and fertiliser, etc. Um, you know, we might be faced with a problem for some people who literally just can't afford. Uh, it's already happening in many towns around uh, our, in our countries, the uh, predominance of food banks and people having to donate to help other people to eat a proper diet or to eat at all. Um, I think if we can just bear in mind that if we can get into the energy of sharing and also trusting that there will be enough, there will be enough. Um, but it's when you go into the energy of scarcity and fear, um, that's when you get into the energy of real difficulty. And we have to try and keep that out of our energy field. OK, 
Um, so I wanted to bring those two references in. What else did I want to say? I also think in terms of proactive action, um, there are things that we can do. And you know, I know a lot of you might not, for example, have a garden, um, but you might have like a window or something like that. And I'm being told to, um, and many people are doing this, is to do with like growing your own vegetables. Now, again, think about the symbolism of the five fish and the three loaves. This year, we are going to be growing some vegetables. And the reality of, is it going to be an abundant crop of everything we could possibly want to eat? And I'm not going to have to go to the supermarket to supplement that is probably unlikely. But it's literally about planting seeds. If you're planting them with the, um, the energy of this can be enough or it can grow into enough year by year if you if you keep doing it year on year you're learning skills you're learning from your mistakes you're learning what works in the soil that you have and what doesn't you're also learning what actually feeds your family and what doesn't and we're going back now a few generations certainly in my childhood my dad used to grow a lot of vegetables which we used to eat I used to really enjoy actually. We're going back to those days. So again, if you haven't got a garden, get yourself a little window box. Um, and most important thing is also to think about, it sounds obvious, but to actually really think about what it is you're gonna grow. And ideally what you're wanting to grow is things that actually are going to be rich in um, nutritional value, uh, carbohydrate value, or um, you know stuff that's actually gonna fill you up, okay? And again, it's less about going into panic and fear in terms of, oh my God, the only tomato I'm going to be able to eat this year is, is one I'm going to grow. No, that's not what I'm saying. It's more about sending signs out to the universe that you are taking steps to help yourself, um, which is important because again, when you give something out, it comes back to you tenfold. Um, but equally, you know, once planted, you never know what may happen. You might have surplus stock that you can then leave outside your front door for other people that haven't actually planted anything. It's that type of thing. We've definitely got to get into this energy of resourcefulness, resilience, um, and taking practical steps to help us. Um, preparing preparing um, for... Uh, I'm just hearing... I'm not trying to put anybody in a state of fear. It's really just, there's nothing wrong with preparing. Uh, it's the energy in which you do it and why you're doing it and then what you intend to do with the proceeds of it. Um, another thing that's becoming very common these days is uh, pickling. I must admit, I have never, well, I have done it once, actually. I have made chutney once and that type of stuff. But again, foods that can be preserved, you know, in... Um, vinegar pickled pickled foods that type of thing i was watching uh, a video the other day and it was of a i don't know it was a, a, a family that had actually bought a farm so you know not the type of scenario most of us are ever going to have but remember they've probably been given that farm also or bought the farm to educate other people because what they've done is via their crops and they'd work damn hard day in day out is that they had actually preserved that's the word not pickled they'd preserved enough um, bottled vegetables and cans or whatever, well, pop bottles really for a whole year, if it came to it for a whole year. So again, that's sort of like high end, <laughs> so that's like one end of the extreme. But you can start small, just maybe doing a few little bottles or a few little jars. And remember, it's more the symbolism of why you're doing it. There's a practical reason, but also there's the thing about I'm, I'm, help, I'm stepping in to help myself, not expecting it all to be handed to me. I'm helping myself and the universe then backs that up with more. OK, and that could come in the shape of anything that could come in the shape of somebody then stepping in to help you or offer you something or barter in exchange, etc. These are sort of the energies that we need to be getting involved in and I think are very important. Uh, but the most important thing is not to be scared. OK, not to be scared. Um, with regard, and I'm, I'm not going to do a big video on this, I just want to touch on it. But again, um, finances. Um, banks, uh, people being concerned about that. The most important thing is that if you have um, something that you're wishing to preserve is to spread it thin, you know, so to not put all of your income into any one particular pot. 
um, to spread it around, basically, whether that is in different banks, whether that's in different commodities. And by commodities in particular, I'm really feeling the energy of silver and gold. Now, I know a lot of people can't afford gold, um, but silver might be something that's more um, obtainable for some. You can go online and you can buy little silver. Um, they're like little medallions or little uh, bars um, and they are worth what you've invested, basically. You can also get people to um, store them for you securely. But again, investing in things such as uh, the metals, the, the, the precious metals, is a very safe way to go. I'm not going to even try to uh, steer the conversation or advise you with regard to things like Bitcoin or anything like that. I know nothing about it um, and I'm not entirely sure it's even stable yet. So I'm, I'm personally not recommending that, but I am recommending um, precious metals. Um, also things such as green stocks and shares. Uh, we're about to put solar panels on our roof. We've already got them actually, but we put them on 20 years ago and the technology has really moved on. And actually, it's a good example, solar panels. I mean, they do cost money, so not everybody can afford them, I appreciate. But it's a good example of this thing about sharing because what you do with this scheme is you buy them, they uh, pretty much, you know, they will heat your water through the summer months, certainly. Uh, it's untested yet in terms of winter months, I don't know, but certainly the summer months. And then anything that's left over is basically um, you can either gift or sell back to the national grid so that other people have it. So effectively, by you producing energy for yourself, anything that's left over, you then give to others. It's very much the same energy of um, Joseph and uh, Pharaoh and Jacob, who... Um, when 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 Egypt had more than they needed, were able to give to others. This is the energy that we need to be stepping into. Um, yeah, I've written down here. There are two types of energies at the moment. There's the energy of panic, okay? The energy of panic and the energy of fear. And if you just feel into that, it's obviously corrosive and not what you want. Or the energy of resourcefulness. And really, it's a very clear choice between which one are you going to choose, the energy of panic or the energy of resourcefulness. And we all need to be stepping more into the energy of resourcefulness. OK, so we'll probably come back to this again. But I just wanted to mention that on this particular video. Right. Let's move on to a different subject now. Um, this is just going to be a very it's an observation of something that came to me. Like many of you, um, I've been watching the uh, footage from Shanghai with growing horror. And uh, there's a, I, think, I think Shanghai in China has a population of about 24 million. So there's a lot of people affected. And uh, the city has basically been in complete lockdown. People not allowed to even go out of their house to buy food. Um, and what they've done is that the authorities have put like a... I don't quite know what it looks like, but I've heard it's like paper strips across people's front doors. It's like it's they've sealed your front door with paper or some sort of thin, you know, substance. It's sealed, basically. So it's sealed so that the authorities can see if the seal has been broken. So if you've gone out and you're not allowed to, then they can see that you've done that. And there's obviously very serious repercussions if you live somewhere like China. Um, and however horrendous that is, and please let us send our prayers and our um, good intentions and energy to China and Shanghai and any of the other towns and cities that are being affected at this moment in time. But what came to me was think about the seal. Think about the seal that they've placed on people's doors. Because I remember a few months ago, I can't remember what video it was, but I, I was told by spirit that the fight for freedom and sovereignty in our world is actually much closer than we think it is. Again, go back to these cards at the start, that actually, believe it or not, it's much more equal than it looks. If you look at those pictures on the news, and I'm not, not disputing that they're not real or anything like that, but if you look at them, you think, oh my God, you know, that is just, it's, it's terrible, it's horrendous. It, it sends you into complete fear and meltdown. But actually we're being told, no, stand still, hold strong. It's more balanced than you think it is. 
That's obviously one of the darkest places at the moment on our planet. And what's happening there is terrible. But the seal that they've actually put on their doors symbolically is so thin. It's what I said in that previous video. It's a bit like we're trying to punch our way out of a paper bag. We're punching and we're punching. We're putting so much energy into them or this or whatever the thing is that we're fighting against, thinking that it's so big and invincible and unbeatable. Whereas Metatron showed me, no, you're trying to punch your way out of a paper bag. It's much thinner than you think it is. All it takes is literally to push through it. Very much like these doors, once pushed open, they're free. I'm not suggesting anybody does that in, in China, if you're watching me, but it's just the symbolism of it. Um, how thin, how thin the, um, the veil actually is between us really being able to step into the new earth, okay? Um, the other thing I want to say with regard to this thin veneer this goes into another area of our world, linking into war, is I've written down here that there seems to be a very paper-thin veneer of civility. Um, and that's what war shows us as well. But again, remember this card, where have we got? So paper-thin um, veneer of civility. War has always shown that. It's always shown that strip away um, or, or give, give a degree of anonymity or, um, I don't know, I don't really want to think about it, but you know, you have all the terrible atrocities that happen in war and then you look at the person that's committed them and you think, wow, how could you do that to another human being? But it's almost like, um, it, it would be the same actually with hunger. You know, they, what, what's that saying that we're all only like five or six meals away from um, anarchy? You know, that actually the, 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 it's very, very thin veneer that keeps society stable um and controlled you know or anything else um strip away that and people return almost to a more animalistic nature um but it can go the other way as well it can go the other way as well it can go it can go that way but it can also go the other way in which people can actually find their um true spirituality and wisdom and their light so it's very finely balanced at this moment in time in our world but remember Mother Nature's energy, which is that laissez-faire, uh, the policy of leaving things to take their own course without interfering. This doesn't mean that we don't help our fellow brothers and sisters around the world. It just means that we um, need to um, not invest so much time in the, wor the worry and the fretting, which actually serves no purpose and it changes absolutely nothing either. It just corrodes us. Um, okay. You see, I've also got another meaning of laissez-faire here. This is from the Cambridge Dictionary. Posted seven days ago for some reason. That's really interesting that I'm just finding this and it's posted seven days ago. It says the idea that people should be free to choose how to do things without too much control from someone in authority. You see, it's really that's what I'm saying, that we're closer than we think we are to um, being able to be in a more equal world without so much um, interference from powers that were fascinating isn't it okay right let's see where else let's just pull a couple of cards for shanghai <sighs> sending our love out there okay what is there to say please archangel metatron Oh, look at those two cards. I love, it's one of my favourite decks, this. I love this deck. Look at that. Couldn't be clearer. What does that remind you of? To me, I'm just getting one word screaming at me. Persecution. Persecution energies. Look at this. Tied at the stake. Look at this. In the Colosseum. Fighting till, till death. Persecution energies. And, you know, remember in, in, in days of old in the Colosseum, the people who were either fighting each other to death or they had a lion thrown in, you know, for extra fun. There were people there paying to see that. There were people that were enjoying that spectacle. But ultimately that civilization fell. OK, that civilization fell. Um, and indeed, you know, this one here 
it's almost like uh, what's that beautiful saying which is like that we are the we are the descendants of the witches that you couldn't kill or something like that you although you burnt it's like you can't kill the energy of freedom you can't kill the energy of sovereignty um good will always triumph over evil um but right now in our face we are seeing the energy of persecution and what does persecution look like i can't think of a, a better example unfortunately of denying people access to food literally when the food is there in the shops it's just you're not allowed to go and get it you know so you open your fridge and there's nothing and you're trying to feed a family but again go back to the energy of what i was talking about in terms of the feeding of the five thousand the the people who are living in blocks somehow they're managing to to share you know i don't know throwing a crust over the balcony or i don't know how they're doing it but it's happening i think actually what's happening and it's worth noting is that you know when you do like these online shops so it's one person in a block taking responsibility for the whole okay and literally either ringing around or saying you know you down there on in flat number 22 is there anything you need to order this week i'm doing an order for the whole block um as i say how they distribute it i've no idea because that's almost like the miracle zone how did jesus do what he did i don't know it's the miracle zone it's about having trust and faith um so not saying any of this is easy, but those cards, Shanghai, that's what we've got. So we've got the, the seven of fire, which would be the seven of wands, and the nine of fire, nine of wands. A lot of heated energy. There's a lot at stake in terms of the powers that were keeping the people down, keeping the people in their place. But they're rising up, you know. If you press people too far and you press them into you know, the horrors of starvation, for example, people will fight back because the will to survive is very strong. Um, so they're playing a, um, the powers that were are playing a dangerous game there because when people have nothing, they have nothing to lose. It's as simple as that. Okay, well, let's pull another couple of cards for Shanghai. I do think the lockdowns are potentially spreading in China. Uh, but again, it's uh, being played out for the whole world. It's meant to be putting fear into all of us, but don't allow it. Don't allow it to do that. Yeah, stranger of fire. It's all fire energy. And what is fire? Fire is masculine energy. It's overt, masculine, patriarchal, old energy. Um, this is a, quite an interesting card because this reminds me, you know when you sit around a fire, a literal fire outside, and you get like these wisps of um, uh, ash uh, that rise, sometimes that are slightly aflame. Um, and they sort of go up into the sky where they are, you know, taken away. Well, look at that, the mask. The, the mask is also with it. Um, and actually, as I've said that, I was actually thinking about um, the mask of the old earth. But of course masks also have another energy in terms of the last two years so i actually feel that symbolic of pandemic energy as well it's almost as though they're trying to keep the pandemic alive they're trying to fuel the fear which is what keeps the pandemic alive i've said this not all, all the time ever since day one that what keeps this pandemic alive is the energy of fear and if you can keep people in fear you can keep it alive that's what it breeds off but this almost feels as though it's just like floating away ultimately not not, not yet also there's a wave there trying to carry it forward as well let's see what else we can pick up i feel like there's another two cards so um Let me have one card for the people. Let me see the people. Let me see the will of the people, the will of the Chinese people. Show me the will of the Chinese people. I'm hearing straight away there's a different will based on age. I mean, that's not, that's very generic. And obviously there's, there's huge uh, variations and it doesn't have to be a rule that applies to everything. But I'm, I'm being shown the younger Chinese and the older Chinese generation. The older Chinese generation worn down by what they've gone through already. The younger generation prepared to fight back. Um, it's the younger generation where the change is going to come. And yeah, look at that. The eight of fire with the chariot on the bottom of the deck uh, and the magician as well. Um, it's about to blow. It's about to blow. <laughs> I mean, literally the eight of fire is about to blow with the chariot. 
um, but equally the magician, the magician. Um, again, from a place of considerable fear and darkness and horror in our world at the moment, um, again, I'm going to go back to this card, the a card that actually um, there is an opportunity for the miracle to come in, um, but it comes in via extraordinary challenge, hardship, darkness and um, evil, for want of a better word. Um, but good always triumphs, remember that. So I am wondering whether there's also um, Mother Earth stepping in. Because let's put it this way, I don't think we should be giving ourselves too much of a pat on the back that the pandemic is, um, or put it this way, that the restrictions that were so severe in many other parts of the world for months are largely um, easing in many places, certainly in the UK. I can't think of any restrictions that we've got anymore. Um, there's nothing that I can't do having not had this. There's nothing, there's nowhere I can't go in the country, I don't believe, because I haven't had this. It's not affecting my life at all. Um, so the restrictions have all gone. And there's a feeling amongst many people that it's sort of, it's over. But I don't think, again, we should give ourselves too much of a pat on the back that we did that, that we learnt all the lessons. I think it's more that Mother Nature came in as the beautiful, loving mother that she is. And she helped us because she was the one that brought in the, the, the lesser um, virulent variant, which has basically sweeped the board, allowing these restrictions to be lifted. It's not the powers that, but, that were that got together and thought, oh, poor loves. They've, you know, they, they've had enough struggle. Let's just make it a bit easier for, you, for them now. No, it wasn't that at all. It was Mother Nature that came in and brought in um, this new variant that was going to sweep the world, which it basically has, that was going to allow the reprieve. And I'm just wondering, with this volcano card, and we've also got the wave and we've got the fire, we've also got a meteor on this card, just feel as though there might be some natural event in China that might um, intervene as well. Um, Mm. Let me have a clarification card, please, for the Eight of Fire. I mean, what warriors? These Chinese, these young Chinese in particular, the, 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 the type that I'm tuning into now, they are warriors. Um, true what? Wow, look at that, the tower. They've got the ability to bring the whole bloody tower down and it needs to be brought down, the old structures. And right now I'm saying that and it's so easy as I say to mock and deride and say, oh, come on, that's not gonna happen. When you go into that mindset of, oh, come on, that's not gonna happen, you enforce that no, it won't happen. If you can actually tap into the will and the bravery and the courage of a lot of these young Chinese men and women, you'll realise that they're feeling right now as though they have nothing. They have nothing to lose. They're willing to blow the whole stack down. OK, but it's energy that does it. It's energy. Uh, at least I think it's energy. I mean, it is energy. I I'm talking fighting. I'm not seeing fighting. Um, let me just clarify what goes with the tower. What goes with the tower? The gesture of tides. It's the youngsters. It is the youngsters. Yeah, that would be the, um, I think that would be the Knight of Cups in the uh, traditional tarot with the tower. Um, remember, cups are emotional. OK, cups is the energy of water, emotion, a lot of water, a lot of energy looking in their cup and thinking, I've got nothing in it, I've got nothing in it. It's not even a question of is it half full or half empty? I've got nothing in it. I'm going to bring the whole thing down. Does this happen overnight? No, I have no idea when this happens. It's not a cop out. I'm just being honest, but I'm reading it here. So back to predictions. It's there on the horizon. 
So either you mock it and you say, don't be daft, it's not going to happen, or you help pull it in, because ultimately this needs to happen. China needs to evolve. China needs to awaken. The consciousness for New Earth to happen on our planet, it can't just happen in um, Glastonbury, you know, or Sedona or um, any of the other places around the world. I've gone blank now that I can think of that are like spiritual centres. No, it has to happen everywhere. We don't enter New Earth until, every, until, until it's covered the whole globe. It needs to cover the whole globe. Okay. So if you've got a landmass such as China, where is it? Um, there, which is taking up a considerable proportion of the land that is staying stuck, similar to Russia, it's not gonna it's not gonna work, is it? These have to be dragged with us, you know, whether voluntarily or well no, it has to be voluntary, you can't force anything. But the thing is, there's a lot of star seeds that have actually incarnated in China that wish to bring this about, that are that have a soul mission to bring it about. And when I say they have a soul mission, they came with the destiny to help bring this about, to either sow it and seed it and water it and nourish it, or literally to birth the plant, you know. Um, so that's why you have to be aware that this is a big prediction I'm making here with regard to China, uh, that it's going to effectively implode. But by that, I'm talking about the old structure, the control, the control, you know, the, 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 what we're looking at. OK, people not even being allowed to go out and buy food on what planet of our solar system or our planetary system or our universe. Is that OK? None of them none of them but it's been very much this this has been chosen as like the last um it's like the last stand so let's wish them well and let's encourage them on and that what you can do to help is to see china for example free to see them free to see them happy to see them abundant and you see, that's where we get into the problem is a lot of people like to blame China or blame Russia or blame any of other country, you know, around the world. Oh, it's the Chinese. It's the Russians. It's this. It's that. They're just our brothers and sisters. Strip away the ruling class and the elite and, you know, all of that. I'm, these are the ordinary people on the street like you and me. They've got blood the same colour as you and me. They need to drink water like you and I do. They need to, all of it, they're just human beings. So we have to also drop our um, antagonism towards certain races. And you see it a lot in the media and I see it a lot on social media as well. And particularly it comes into politics, doesn't it? You know, it's about blaming them, them. They are an aspect of us, starting to see that, feel that and truly integrate that. OK. Right. Well, I think I will leave it there. There are a few other things I would like to look at in my uh, in coming videos and I will just tell you what they are. I'm going to take a look at uh, one of the characters in our world that people either love or hate. And again, we need to, you need to. Um, if you hate him, you need to be looking at that. And why is that person triggering you so? But I just like to go in very neutrally. I've no idea um, what I'm going to find, but I'm going to be looking at uh, Ellen. M-U-S-K. <laughs> Sorry to have to keep spelling things out. It's ridiculous. But um, yeah, I'd like to have a look at his energy. I'm going to have a look at... Um, B-I-R-D, flu. Um, I don't think I covered that in this video, did I? I can't remember now. Uh, no, I don't think I did. No, I didn't. Um, but again, remember, a lot of people sort of trying to pull that in, in terms of, oh my God, that's the next thing we need to be worrying about. As soon as you do that, you're going to be pulling it in very nicely for the human race. We don't want to do that. Um, so but I'm going to look at that in a separate video. And I'm going to do a video on the French election, hopefully, if I have time, uh, looking at the candidates, maybe an update on USA. 
um, amongst other things. But anyway, look, I'm going to leave it there for now. Sending you all much love and uh, remember to hold the faith. Uh, remember to keep in the energy of resourcefulness and sharing. Remember to not see the world as going to uh, rack and ruin, but actually coming into greater balance. And to be a bit like our great mother, Mother Earth, who knows ultimately that we're going to be okay. All right. Much love. Take care. Bye bye for now. Bye.